Our topic for today is material alteration under sections 124 and 125 of the Negotiable Instruments Law. For those who have a copy of my book, The Law on Negotiable Instruments, the following discussion is found on pages 298 to 308 of the book. Section 124, Alteration of Instrument, Effect of Where a negotiable instrument is materially altered without the assent of all parties liable thereon, it is avoided except as against a party who has himself made, authorized, or assented to the alteration and subsequent endorsers. But when an instrument has been materially altered and is in the hands of a holder in due course not a party to the alteration, he may enforce payment thereof according to its original tenor. So, what is alteration and when is it material? In the case of International Corporate Bank versus CA, this is a 2001 case, the Supreme Court held, an alteration is said to be material if it alters the effect of the instrument. It means an unauthorized change in an instrument that purports to modify in any respect the obligation of a party or an unauthorized addition of words or numbers or other change to an incomplete instrument relating to the obligation of a party. Section 124 does not define what material alteration is. It only gives us the effect of material alteration. It says that the person who has himself made authorized or assented to the alteration recovers nothing, but a holder in due course recovers according to the original tenor of the instrument. This is the only provision in the negotiable instruments law that speaks of an original tenor as against tenor as altered. The original tenor is the term of the instrument before the alteration, and the tenor as altered is the term of the instrument after the alteration. For example, in a promissory note which states, I promise to pay to the order of Juan de la Cruz 10,000 pesos, but Juan de la Cruz, the holder, changes the amount of 10,000 pesos to 100,000 pesos. That is material alteration under section 125, letter B. Now, the amount of 10,000 pesos is the original tenor and the amount of 100,000 pesos is the tenor as altered. There is no explicit exception of the alteration made by a stranger or what is called spoilation, although that may be covered indirectly by the last sentence of the section to the effect that in the hands of a holder in due course, it is enforceable according to its original tenor. Neither does this section make a distinction between a fraudulent alteration and a non-fraudulent alteration. In either case, if material and made by the holder, the alteration avoids the instrument generally. The reason for holding the instrument avoided is to prevent fraud in the first instance and secondly, to secure the identity of the document. Of course, if the parties consent, they will be bound by the instrument as altered, for in effect, it is the formation of a new and independent contract. Hence, an alteration or addition in an instrument, as by changing the amount payable from 10,000 pesos to 100,000 pesos, if done with the consent or concurrence of all parties to the instrument, does not avoid it. Take note further that any change that alters the effect of the instrument is material regardless of whether it is favorable or not to the obligor. Section 125. What constitutes a material alteration? Any alteration which changes a. the date, b. the sum payable either for principal or interest, c. the time or place of payment, d. the number or the relations of the parties, e. the medium or currency in which payment is to be made, and f. or which adds a place of payment where no place of payment is specified, or any other change or addition which alters the effect of the instrument in any respect is a material alteration. Section 125 is not a closed enumeration in view of the second part of the last sentence, 
letter F, which states that any other change or addition which alters the effect of the instrument in any respect is a material alteration. First in the list of material alterations under Section 125 is the date. Here is an example of a promissory note with two dates in it, as you can see. The date of execution, June 1, 2021, and the date of maturity, December 30, 2021. Let's begin with the date of maturity, December 30, 2021. If the holder P in this example, changes the date of maturity from December 30, 2021 to, for example, November 30, 2021 in order to accelerate the maturity of the instrument, that change will impact the obligation of the maker. Then, that is material alteration under 125 first paragraph. As to the date of execution, here is an example of a bill of exchange drawn on June 1, 2021. If the payee or holder, P, changes the date of execution from June 1, 2021 to, for example, May 1, 2021, one month earlier, that will uh, change the running of the 30-day period. It will begin to run not from June 1, 2021, but from May 1, 2021, and obviously, that will impact the obligation of the drawee slash acceptor. Therefore, it is a material alteration. Second in the list of material alterations is the sum payable either for principal or for interest. Let us begin with the sum payable for principal. Here is a promissory note that states, For value received, I promise to pay to pay or order 10,000 pesos. If P or holder changes the amount to any other figure aside from 10,000 pesos, that will be material alteration because it will change or impact the obligation of the maker. As to the sum payable for interest, here is a promissory note which states, For value received, I promise to pay to P or order 10,000 pesos on December 30, 2021, subject to 3% interest per month in case of default. If a P or holder changes the interest rate to any other rate aside from 3% per month, then that will be material alteration because it will affect the obligation of the maker. Remember that any change or modification in the obligation of any party to the instrument will constitute material alteration regardless of whether it is favorable or not favorable to said party. Third in the list of material alterations is time or place of payment. Time is identical with date. The mention of one includes the other. Here is a promissory note which states, For value received, I promise to pay to the order of P 10,000 pesos on December 31, 2021 at BDO Makati Avenue, Makati. If the holder changes the date of payment to any other aside from December 31, 2021 and the place of payment to any other place aside from BDO Makati Avenue, that is material alteration as it will impact the obligation of the maker and therefore it will discharge the maker. Remember that any change or modification in the obligation of a party to the instrument without his consent is material alteration and it will discharge said party regardless of whether it is favorable or not favorable to him. Fourth in the list of material alterations is the number or the relations of the parties. Settled is the rule that any change in the number or relation of the parties to a bill or note is material alteration. Here is a promissory note that states, For value received, I promise to pay to the order of P 10,000 pesos. If P adds the name of another person as payee, for example, P and X, or adds the name of another person as maker, for example, M and L, without the consent of the maker, 
that is material alteration and it will discharge the original maker because it will modify or change his obligation. Fifth in the list of material alterations is the medium or currency in which payment is to be made. Let's use the same promissory note in which the maker promises to pay to the order of P 10,000 pesos. If P changes the currency in which payment is to be made from peso to any other currency like dollar, yuan, yen, euro, etc. without the consent of the maker, that will obviously impact the obligation of the maker and the result is it will discharge the maker. Sixth in the list of material alterations is which adds a place of payment where no place of payment is specified. Here is a promissory note that states, For value received, I promise to pay to the order of P 10,000 pesos. Take note that no place of payment is indicated in the instrument. However, if P adds a place of payment like maybe PNB Escolta or BDO Makati without the consent of the maker, that will change, of course, the obligation of the maker and the result is it will discharge the maker. Effects of Material Alteration General Rule Where a negotiable instrument is materially altered without the assent of all parties liable thereon, it is avoided. Exceptions Number 1 The following remain liable on the instrument despite the material alteration. Letter A The party who made, authorized, or assented to the alteration and Letter B Subsequent endorsers And Number 2 holder in due course, who can recover according to the original tenor of the instrument. Here is an example of a promissory note that has been materially altered. M. Maker issues a promissory note to P or order for 10,000 pesos. P endorses the note to A and authorizes the latter to alter the amount from 10,000 pesos to 100,000 pesos. A endorses the note to B who is aware of the alteration. B endorses it to C who has no knowledge of the alteration, C to D who is aware of the alteration, and D to E, a holder in due course. What is then the legal effect of the alteration? The instrument is avoided as to M, the maker, who did not assent to the alteration. However, the following are liable on the instrument. P, because he authorized the material alteration. A. Because he made the alteration himself, and B and B because they assented to the alteration. C. Who has no knowledge of the alteration is also liable being a subsequent endorser in view of his warranty under sections 65 and 66, which says that the instrument is genuine and in all respects what it purports to be. As to E, a holder in due course, he can enforce payment from M according to the original tenor of the instrument, which is 10,000 pesos, and if dishonored by M from P, A, B, C, or D according to the tenor as altered, which is 100,000 pesos. Here is an example of a bill of exchange which has been materially altered. D. Drawer orders X. Drawee to pay P. Payee or order 10,000 pesos. P. endorses the bill to A and authorizes the latter to alter the amount from 10,000 pesos to 100,000 pesos. A. endorses the bill to B who is aware of the alteration. B. to C who has no knowledge of the alteration. C. to D who is aware of the alteration. And D. to E, a holder in due course. E presents the instrument to X who accepts. What is the effect of material alteration? The instrument is avoided as to D, the drawer, who did not assent to the alteration. However, the following remain liable on the instrument. P, because he authorized the alteration. A, because he made the alteration himself. And B and D, because they assented to the alteration. What about C? C, who has no knowledge of the alteration, is also liable being a subsequent endorser in view of his warranty under Section 65 and 66, which says that the instrument is genuine and in all respects what it purports to be.
as to E, a holder in due course, he can enforce payment from X, the acceptor or D, the drawer, according to the original tenor of the instrument, which is 10,000 pesos. And if dishonored by the drawee or the drawer, he can enforce payment from P, A, B, C, and D according to the tenor as altered, which is 100,000 pesos. As to the drawee who accepted a bill that has been materially altered, his undertaking as an acceptor is to pay the instrument according to the tenor of his acceptance. Acceptance is the signification by the drawee of his assent to the order of the drawer to pay the payee. Is the acceptor liable according to the original tenor, which is 10,000 pesos, or according to the tenor as altered, which is 100,000 pesos? In the example given, the alteration was made without the knowledge and consent of the drawer. Hence, the logical conclusion is that the acceptor is liable according to the original tenor for the simple reason that it is the amount the drawer had ordered him to pay and subsequently charged to him as payment made upon his order. The drawee would not accept except upon the undertaking that the drawer who ordered him to pay would reimburse him of what he had paid, and the drawer would pay only according to the tenor before the alteration. It is for this reason that a holder in due course can recover only according to the original tenor of the instrument. As to the parties who altered the instrument, authorized the alteration, and assented to the alteration, they cannot recover, but are liable according to the tenor as altered. As to the subsequent endorsers, their liability is based on their warranty under Section 65 and 66. Our main reference is the Law on Negotiable Instruments by yours truly. Thank you.